Hey y'all, Beasley here, coming to you today from downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'm joined by local historian and photographer, Patrick McNicholas. Operator of the Time Travel Tulsa page, and uh, you know, we're down here in one of my favorite locations, uh, especially the Mid-Continent Building, both on the ground and above, but we're local historians. We're urban explorers. And also the two that make up the Time Travel Tulsa and Tulsa Times podcast. We are standing at my favorite intersection in Tulsa, 4th and Boston. As we pan across this intersection, notice that every direction is downhill. This is the top of Tulsa. This corner tells the story of oil in Oklahoma and the boom and bust cycles of the energy industry. The oldest portion of this block built in 1910, five years after the discovery of the Glen Pool oil field. The newest structure, 1984, only two years later in 1986, oil prices fell below $10 per barrel in the days of Tulsa being the oil capital of the world were over. Let's take a look at the buildings and share a few details about each of these buildings at the intersection of Fourth and Boston. The Kennedy Building, and also known as the Galley, was built in 1915, the original part here on Fourth Street, but not complete in full until 1981. The building was built by Galley, but after he lost his daughter during the 1918 pandemic, he sold his holdings and left town, and that's when the Kennedy brothers stepped in. They were local doctors who purchased the building and added a Boston side entrance. By the early 1920s, the Kennedy building was in the shape of a letter U. It looked like a single block building from both the 4th Street and Boston Avenue sides but was hollow in the center with only three sides complete. This configuration allowed natural lighting in all the rooms and offices, also allowed for windows that could be open for air movement through the building in the summer months, 1920, there was no air conditioning. The fourth street elevation of the Galley building was completed in 1915. This eastern wall was completed in 1981. The building retains that open concept with a massive 10-story atrium in the middle of this building, while the front elevation is early 20th century commercial style. The interior of this building is totally 80s. 16 stories tall originally, the Cosden Building was the tallest when completed in 1918. The southeast corner of Fourth and Boston was originally the Presbyterian Mission School and then later the site of Tulsa's first high school, 1906. Joshua Cosden is a character unique to Tulsa. No other time and no other place could a man like Cosden exist. After building the first large refinery on the west side of the Arkansas River in 1913, Josh Cosden was amongst the richest men in the world. Cosden Oil later became Mid-Continent Oil, introduced their brand Diamond Gasoline, later called Diamond X or DX. Stay gold, soda pop. The Cosden Building and the Mid-Continent Tower are not one building. The Mid-Continent Tower is a 36-story office building with that iconic green copper top that is featured in every Tulsa skyline painting or photo. The tower was built in 1984. While the two buildings appear as one, the tower is suspended above the roof of the Cosden Building. They are separated by six inches and 66 years. 
So when the light hits it just right, you can actually see those trusses through the window that hold the 20 floors above the initial 16 floors of the building that was built in 1918. The tower is cantilevered over the building. Obviously home to many buildings over the years, by 1967, the Boston Building became the headquarters of Home Federal Savings and Loan Association. In 1985, this building was headquarters for Sooner Federal Savings and Loan. 1985 saw both an oil bust and the savings and loan crisis. In January of 1985, depositors withdrew more than $34 million, closed 2,500 accounts in a two-day run on the bank. The savings and loan was declared insolvent by 1989. With few tenants after 1992, this building became an eyesore on this otherly beautiful corner. This lot was technically a brownfield, as with many buildings of this era, this building was laden with asbestos. After sitting empty for almost a decade, the building became uh, eligible for tax credits and helped really contribute to Tulsa's oil capital historic district. The renovations that took place allowed Hyatt Place to open in December of 2020. The original portion of 320 South Boston was completed in 1910 as Exchange National Bank. By 1928, it was known as the National Bank of Tulsa, and it was in 1928 that we saw the completion of the tower on this bow arts masterpiece. So the tower portion was actually completed in the late 1920s. It was fabled to be a mooring station for airships, but it nearly makes it impossible. And then later years, it became a weather teller with a series of lights that forecasted and predicted the weather conditions. In 1975, the National Bank of Tulsa became Bank of Oklahoma continues to occupy this space to this day. In 1991, the Bank of Oklahoma was acquired by Tulsa native, Tulsa High School graduate, and Tulsa philanthropist, George Kaiser. As we pan across Boston Avenue, looking south from 4th Street, we see the contrasting architectural styles Throughout the 20th century, the original 19-teens and 20s office buildings present elaborate and ornate facades with men like Cosden and Phillips showing their wealth and prestige, while the buildings of the 1960s and 70s present a simpler, less elaborate design, their unadorned box-like appearance filled with simple offices and cubicles, form following function, a stark contrast to the classic buildings of the historic oil capital, which offered a grand and dignified built environment for the Tulsans of downtown. We hope that you have enjoyed this brief introduction to the heart of Tulsa's oil Capital Historic District. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a like, subscribe for future content. I've also put links in the description for this video for the Tulsa Times uh, podcast and for Patrick's website. Time Travel Tulsa, it's tulsapast.com. In the meantime, I am John Beasley. And Patrick McNicholas, look out for the second episode coming out soon. And we will see you downtown T-Town.